What's up, track junkies? This is Larry installing some CNC racing frame sliders on the 2021 Ducati Panigale V4S. Uh, install went pretty smooth, as you'll see. Uh, the only downside I see to this kit is the button head socket head cap screws. They're a little uh, finicky as far as easy to strip out the top of the head, although I don't think I did, but uh, it is a little bit of a concern. But other than that, these things look great, should function perfectly. Let's get on with it. All right, Trek Junkie Racer. So now we're going to install the CNC frame sliders. And if you're like me, I like to lay everything out first, look at the instructions, and see if I have enough bolts for everything. So this one here is actually pretty easy. This is going to go on the left side. And they have instructions here that are a little bit difficult to follow, but this is just because it's not in color, but you have... Uh, all these little points here pointing to your engine case this side actually is the brake side as you see there and this side is the uh, shift side and there's a bigger detailed picture on the back as well doing the same thing so <laughs> it's the left side was pretty e is pretty easy hadn't put it on yet but the right side looks a little bit more difficult so what it's telling me here to do is that what we're essentially going to end up doing is removing uh, the brake holder here and hopefully uh, you ha this will have enough room to move the move the uh, brake line slightly um, but we'll utilize this screw this screw this screw this one back here and then there's one up there so that one up there and that one there will be held on by this contraption here so it'll look uh, this black piece will actually be behind the brake reservoir and then uh, then you'll attach the brake reservoir uh, with some spacers that it gives you right here in one, two, three places uh, and you'll attach these to those three, right? So you won't actually even move the brake lines uh, here at all. So you're just going to be removing this black plastic holder further out with some spacers. So you can clear your black spacer here that's going to go in there, which then will hold your frame slider uh, like so. This red plate will then, you know, screw into here to hold it. And these two right here are going to be held in place with the engine case uh, covers, which should be, yeah, those two like that. So anyway, <laughs> let's get into this. All right. All right, let's start videoing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off here. Like so. And I'm gonna set them down here. This one here. This is of course your mounting bracket for your brake reservoir. They all appear to be the exact same length. We'll save here real quick. Just to make sure they are, let me see. They are all the same length as each other. So now we got this free here. And let me see. Can move this back and forth a little bit and what's gonna happen is we'll have these spacers if i can stop being clumsy these spacers will go in between them as well so let me move this out of the way and get some room in here all right so you got your torx screws right here i don't want to break them loose that's this one right here and the one in between right there And get in here. Make sure you get it good and seat it and break it loose. It's pretty easy, they're not on too, too tight. Excuse the hands in the way, but this it is what it is. One. I think these are going to be. 
This is a little bit more challenging than say rear sets, I think. It's funny. It's hard to get into there. Let me see if I can get in here this way. Oopsie. If I can't just slide this forward a little bit. Nope, can't slide it forward either. I don't want to break this. I have to pull it out of the way just a little bit here so I can get some, some threads on it here. Yeah, there we go. Come on, little guy. All right, so I got those out of the way. What am I hanging up on here? So what we're gonna have here now is uh, this piece. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I won't let me zoom no more. Is this bracket here. Now be careful on what bolts you use. Definitely read the instructions. This is like 30, um, let me see what this is. This is, yeah, M6 by 35. And this one's the M6 by 45. So you wanna make sure you have the right length so you don't screw anything up. But yeah, it's gonna go back there. We're gonna have to slip it in behind it and let her rip potato chip. All right, let me get in position. All right, hopefully we can get in here and see, but well, this black piece right here, kind of hard to see. <sighs> However, here it is right here. You can see me moving around my finger. That piece, of course, is up against there. We're gonna insert our bolts. And screw it on down. All right, let me show you what I did. So, uh, this one here, this is 35 mil, and that's the 45 mil, I believe. I put a little bit of blue Loctite on it uh, just because these are pain in the ass to get to later, but you're able to kind of move this out a little bit away. You got a little bit of flex here to get your, your head uh, in there to tighten it down. Uh, so not so bad as well, tighten that down. Now I'm just doing hand tight. Uh, I don't remember what this torque spec is for it. I think it's around 30 Newton, Newton, so um, Newton meters, but um, don't quote me that, I don't know, look at your manual. They're not very dang tight, um, and I definitely don't wanna strip anything out, so. All right, and then now you can see we have the space here, and this is where we're gonna use the spacers in between, let me get it there, in between, ah, come on now. In between there, from that screw and that screw, see if I can zoom in here, there we go. Bear with me. You can use these spacers here in between, right? Uh, for one, two, and then three right there. Uh, I'll get them installed and show you what it looks like real quick. Alrighty, now these are a little bit of a booger, but you can see how it's already kind of installed. I got this back plate, this back, can't really see it very well, but I'll move it out of the way. There is the back spacer. We're removing the two torque screws again from that, replacing them with these which are M5s, uh, you'll need a, let me see, yeah, five mil uh, to tighten those up. No, sorry, you will need a four mil to tighten those up, is what I got right here. And then you have uh, three of these screws here with the spacers. Uh, like I said, I'll show you how they look. There's just two spacers installed. Screw them on down, that's gonna be a um, three millimeter wrench. Right here for these, these, and I gotta get that one right right there, put the spacer in that one as well. So I'll put that in and uh, we'll get on to the next section here. So I just wanted to show you this section here. All right. All right, since this back one's such a pain to get to, let me just show you real quick. Now you also wanna make sure that these spacers were this little ribbed in, it shows it in the, in the instructions facing out. 
But uh, if you're not familiar with this fairing, which I just found out, it just has a little pop socket right there for it. So you wanna pull that apart and of course pull these two screws out first to give it a little extra flex, just so you can bend this out of the way because you don't wanna drop this little spacer down in between here. So obviously I won't be able to film, well you wouldn't be able to see me filming this anyways, but that's a little tip is to uh, pop this out and of course unscrew these two screws out first so you give you a little bit of, a little bit of wiggle room there. So, all right. All right, next up, now you can start to see that this thing is starting to come together here. We've got the, you know, the back bracket right here. We got the reservoir with the spacers put in, all buttoned down. Now we have this bracket here, which is gonna slide in right here. Uh, you're gonna pull these two engine case covers screws out and we'll be replacing them with the other ones. And since this is so far back, there is a spacer that you'll be utilizing to be pushing against there with the spacer and that right there. So let's do it. And since you have the fairing out of the way, this is a good time to go ahead and knock this out as well. Again, these are a uh, T30. Okay. It's a pretty tight fit unless you want to pull a full fairing off, which I do not. Boom, just like that, man. I'll tell you what. Alrighty. Now you can see that's gonna fit right there. That's gonna look slick with the spacer. Again, now you wanna pay attention to the screw length. So this one is a M6 by 45. That's gonna go on the top right here. It's got a nice little recess for it. And you got your spacer, slide it on, and it's gonna screw into this back piece. And this is taking an M4 wrench. Alrighty. I'm gonna kind of get that one started in there first. Oh, you know what? Forgot one important thing. A little bit of blue Loctite on that one. It does call for some blue Loctite, so that's what we're doing. All right. Lined up again. Easy peasy lemon squeezing. So now we got the bottom screws, which these are M30s, M6 by M30s. Those do not, let me see, require blue Loctite. So I'm not gonna add it. I will double check it though, later on. The uh, original, the original studs did not have any Loctite on them at all either. So, I imagine since these are magnesium, we don't want to get them stuck <laughs> in there. This is where my little. Add a little smaller little wrench here, that'd be handy. All 
All right, we're gonna snug them up. Snug as a bug in a rug. How many more of these little silly uh, things gonna have? I just go hand tight on these. Check your manual. This is just what I'm doing. Don't trust me. I am not a licensed mechanic. So next up is finally the slider, and then you're done. Roll this up. This, of course, you want to put a little bit of Loctite on as well. I smeared it in myself, but. Let me see what size this is gonna be. This looks like. Let me go get the wrench for this. All right, this big old stud here is a, what is it? So we're using an M10 30 by 35. I'm gonna use a uh, eight millimeter wrench for it. Simple as that. Drop it in like so. Get your wrench on there and screw it in. Rotate this to CNC logo, however you want it to look before you tighten it down. I think I'll just do it with it straight up. That looks pretty good. go that is them installed this is the right side tnc frame sliders this is probably the more difficult size not too hard uh, to do as you can see it's just a little bit more forethought put into it but yep you can see the spacers back there everything works feels as hard as a rock now if you actually went down on it with these don't know how well they'll hold up Hopefully I'll never find out. My one concern is, is stripping out these screws when you have a force going this way. Is it gonna break here first? I would hope it breaks here first and not down here. So same thing on the other side. Pretty much got really good uh, leverage right back here for your leverage arm if you're gonna hit down. And you can see they do just Barely. Well, actually, the fairing's not pushed in yet. So, let me push it in real quick. So, if the fairing pushed in, <laughs> they just barely stick out uh, past it. So, pretty good. Nice. Let's go to the other side. Alrighty, now we're on the, the other side here. This is the uh, shifter sign frame sliders. And again, this is just going to be mounted in uh, with one, two, and then the other one is hidden right up there. Three bolts. We're going to remove the three Torx head bolts, put these in, put the outside slider on there. Again, we're going to want to remove a couple of these fairing bolts and pop this fairing out so we can access it. Uh, now, this actually comes with spacers as well because there is a little bit of a standoff right here this this cable here for the sensor is uh kind of in the way but with this spacer we'll zoom in here one hand in it anyway <laughs> with the spacer it'll fit right there so all right let's get into it all right
Again, these are uh, three mil. We need a three mil for this, rather. Sorry, there you go, three mil. <laughs> Give this a tug. The, uh, it's right here. So you wanna know where to tug on it. Be about right here, as far as it, the fairing stay. here and we're gonna do these three bolts here again this is using a t30 let me see if i can get a small wrench yep looks like i will be able to get my wrench in there without pulling it off further oh, let's pull these off Should get a good bite on it. Yep. And this has a little uh, clip here for this as well. Zoom in there. A little bit more difficult to get to this one here for sure. It would be a little easier if you just removed the fairing completely. However, that is a lot of pain in the butt to do it. Now you will want to pay attention about the length of the screws and the ones that you use here. Follow instructions on here because these are actually three different sizes being that, well, let's see. Uh, two M50s, M50, M50, and M55 right here. So as you can see there, a little bit longer. The M50s are the right two, and the 55 is this left one. Just a smidge of oil on it. What that one looks like a little bit of sealant or something on there. So you got three spacers, like I said. Here's the three spacers. Slide them on. I'm gonna put this back one on first. Move these out of the way. This is the. Uh... Oh, ain't my lock tight. A <clears throat> little bit of blue. Lock tight on that. Make sure you get it in there. And I'll obviously make sure you get it through that little uh, grommet. Cable tie, or not really a cable tie, but just a grommet. All right, let's grab the other two. And a dab 
and even a dab. So. This one's actually a little hard to do too because that washer, I'm trying to hold that washer without dropping it. There you go. I'll add it. Bottom one on here. Again, I'm just going to hand tighten these and come back and torque them down. These are using 4 mil. A little bit of a tedious job, I think. Put frame sliders on, and I'm not, you know, there's always an argument whether you should use frame sliders or shouldn't use them, blah, 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 blah. But I like them for just if you're to drop your bike in the garage, that's kind of what I like to use them for if you were to go down on the track I don't like them I mean they work a lot of times they'll bust engine cases and stuff to where you have them bolted in I've seen that before and I've also seen them flip bikes when they dig into the grass so you know tomato tomato Hopefully I didn't bugger that up. Nope, that's good. All right, so let's get the rest of them. Four mil side wrench, a little bit easier to do. I don't want to over torque these. Because I don't want to strip anything. There we go. I just can tell better with my with my hands free like this yep that's tight all right that's it there now again we just got to put the slider on we're done same procedure a little bit of loctite Put your CNC logo where you want it to look pretty for you. That's what you're into. 
Obviously it is because we got red ones. <clears throat> All right, there we go. We're done. All right, there you have it. Got the CNC frame sliders installed. A little bit of walk around there. They turned out looking really, really sharp on there. Hopefully I'll never use them. You can see when the fairing is all buttoned up, uh, it just sticks out the bottom half. The top half would, of course, looks like it would uh, crack. Looks like right here you would still hit, but you would protect some of the fairing there so they don't stick out too too far like i said i'm just looking to save um you know cases and uh engine cases and and the a little bit of the fairing that i can if it was the tip over in the garage or something like that yeah look pretty good right side same thing Pretty sweet, hope you enjoyed that install. This side was a little bit more of a pain, but we got her done. So until next time, we'll see you on the track.